Okay, here we are, five o'clock, last session before the closing ceremonies. And then, of course, a reminder, we'll have a networking event at John Harvard's, uh, pretty much walk through Harvard, down a couple blocks, takes about five minutes walk down there. So hopefully you all can join us there. Um, so for our last presentation, I'd like to introduce Amar Ali. Um, he's a computer science PhD candidate at Northeastern, and his research focuses on cybersecurity and privacy. Very apropos for today. Um, he's been covered in venues such as MIT Technology Review, Ars Technica, ThreatPost, etc. Um, and he's talked at a number of different conferences, including DEF CON, Crypto Village, and Virus Bulletin. So without further ado, let's give it up for Amar Ali. First of all, thank you everyone for coming, and I'm sorry for being the last talk between you and the drinking session. So without any further ado, today we're gonna talk about cryptography, and especially modern crypt cryptography. So uh, cryptography is really nothing new. It has been happening for long time. Even in ancient times, they used to use, use the Caesar cipher or just write uh, the secret message on someone's head and then wait for hair to grow and then again shave their head and read the message. But today we're gonna talk about the modern aspect of cryptography where you have in your digital uh, communication and you use uh, basic, uh, the mathematical properties to secure your data, not the physical properties. As we said, it's very ubiquitous today. For example, it, it, uh, it is in your mobile phone. When you uh, write your data, you store your photos, or even when you make a card uh, call, for example, you're using G GSM, 2G, or even 3G calls, all of your communications are encrypted. And it, you have support for cryptography in every respectable program language these days. Uh, even further, uh, right now, the cryptography, for example, AES and SHA functionalities are part of CPUs, so which means they're part of your hardware. There is no software implementation of cryptography anymore. They're being embedded in your chips right now, even the CPU that you have on your laptop, your computer, even your mobile phone. And it's really not hard to do cryptography the right way, at least the programming, but you see a lot of people making mistakes. The big ones, for example, Debian had a problem in the random number generator which made the secrets uh, vulnerable. Uh, companies like LinkedIn and Adobe and Ashley Madison, they stored the password in a wrong way that uh, made a lot of people vulnerable and put them at risk. And other companies such as Snapchat were using a wrong kind of cryptography, only using one uh, wrong letter instead of CBC, for example, you s they used the EBC and made their uh, secrets uh, at risk. And even uh, experts such as the Wi-Fi alliances, uh, they, when they were designing the web standard for Wi-Fi uh, communications, they also made a mistake. So it's not only the amateurs, even the professionals and uh, experts can make a mistake. Uh, can make a mistake. Okay, now it makes more sense. Do you have voice? Okay. Yep. Uh, and uh, the cryptography, uh, we have two kinds of cryptography at a high level. One of them is called symmetric cryptography or shared key cryptography, and the other one's public key cryptography or asymmetric cryptography. If you want to think of it as in, the, like in your world, uh, not in computers, but in real life, it's if you want to give access to your house to your friend. So you create the same key and you send it to your friend, then they would have access to your house. This would be the symmetric or the shared key cryptography. But the public key cryptography is as if you uh, create many locks and you have only one key for that lock and you only hold that lock. And if your friends want to send you something secret, they can use those physical locks, put uh, the secret in the box, lock it, send it back to you, and you, only, you are the only one who has the key to uh, unlock the box, which would be as if you're doing the decryption in digital world. So that would be... Uh, uh, analogy for the real world uh, cases. As you can see here, for the uh, secret key cryptography or symmetric, you share the same key. And in the public, you just use two different keys that are attached to each other and bind to each other, but they are different. And the differences between them, as we mentioned, uh, symmetric uh, uh, encryption, for example, your AES is t up to 1,000 times faster, even at the software implementation, yet alone when you have it embedded in your CPU or your hardware. Uh, but one of the downsides of symmetric encryption is you need to share a secret. For example, if you want to give your friend the key to your house, you have to have a way of transmitting this uh, secret or this valuable information or physical thing that you have. 
So if you can trust the post office to send the key, why not just send their secret through a public medium? That's why this asymmetric encryption has problems, how to share that secret information. That's why in real world, we have a combination of the uh, public key and the symmetric key encryption. You usually encrypt the key to your, secret, uh, to your symmetric encryption with that public key. You, uh, share it with the you share it with the others, and then they use the private key to decrypt that key and use the key of the symmetric encryption to do the decryption. We look at some diagrams to make more sense of it. But that's why in real world situation, you usually combine the two together. The uh, most famous uh, symmetric encryption algorithm nowadays is AES, uh, which stands for Ad Advanced Encryption uh, Standard. Uh, it's also known as Reindel, which is a combination of the last name of two Belgian cryptographers who actually introduced or designed this algorithm. It was part of the NIST competition to design the next generation of uh, crypto standard. Uh, uh, NIST is the National Institute of Standard and Technology, and they are in charge of uh, standardizing different things, uh, such as cryptography. And they have some requirements that it should be fast, both in software and hardware, and you should support blocks of the 128 and different key sizes. Uh, can anyone name what was the previous standard before AES for encryption? Yes? DES. DES. So for example, DES was fast in hardware, but extremely slow in software. For in AES, they wanted to be fast in both software and hardware. And it was uh, designed by these two uh, cryptographers that I'm not going to butcher their names, which are, because I cannot pro pro uh, pronounce it right. Uh, and they published the design in 98, and with any standardization, it takes a long time. So it took them about three years to uh, actually standardize this uh, encryption, and it was uh, published in 2001. The other candidates were Mars, RC6, Serpent, Two Fish, which you still have them today, but they are not as popular as, as widely used. Uh, so as we said, uh, this uh, uh, cryptography mechanism, such as AES, they work on blocks, which means uh, you get a chunk of data, you do your algorithm on it, and you get an output. But the uh, chalk or block suck, the limit is very limited, 128 bits. If you have a longer message, you need to find a way to uh, encrypt these blocks uh, separately and somehow mix them together. So that's why we call the mods of operation for a block cipher. And there are many different kinds of them, but these three are the most well known. The ECB is completely broken. You should never use it. So for example, if you do a code activity of your program, you just search for keywords ECB. If you find it somewhere, there is something definitely wrong with your code, so you have to do something. CBC is a secure in terms of just the mode of operation, but it has its own shortcomings, the same as CTR. That's why you have to make. Uh, they are more secure than ECB. There is no way to make ECB secure, but CBC and CTR there are ways to make them secure. So this is the ECB pattern. Can anyone like spot what can be a problem with ECB? So uh, that's um, somehow correct. Uh, it, uh, what, to put it accurately, for example, if you have the same plain text, it will produce the same cipher text. So it's, it kind of reveals the pattern in your uh, file or your, or your secret that you're encrypting. Because if uh, some message or something is being repeated uh, in your message, even the, dec uh, the encryption is going to be the same in your ciphertext. So that's something that we don't want to reveal the pattern uh, because it would be used as a side channel. We want something that uh, kind of uh, get rid of this. So if you use, uh, look at the CBC, whenever you encrypt something, you just use that encrypted value and pass it to the next block and you XOR them together. So even if the two block one and block two are the same, the encryption of block one and block two is going to be different. And to, to make sure if you're using the same message uh, multiple times with the same key, we introduce this notion of IV, or initialization vector, which is a random value to make sure even if you're encrypting the same message with the same key, each time you're going to get a different ciphertext because of that IV that is being XOR in your uh, value. The CTR uh, uses the same notion as IV, but they call it a counter and announce mode. So you have a counter that each block block one, block two, block three, block n, that would be a counter of the block. And the nonce uh, is being acted as like an IV or the random value that you're using. 
Can anyone spot the uh, benefit of CTR over CVC, especially in speed? Exactly. So here, for example, if you look at CVC, if you do not encrypt block one, you wouldn't be able to encrypt block two or block three. You, everything needs to be in serial, so which means it's going to be slow. Maybe 20 years ago, it was okay because we didn't have that much of like multi-core CPUs and multi-processing programming. Nowadays, CTR would be more uh, uh, better. And one of the other advantages, uh, CTR can support any, anything such as PRP, or, uh, but uh, CBC is only PRF. This is more advanced, but it's not important. But most important is the uh, parallelization. So to put it in uh, pictures, uh, if your original uh, picture is this uh, Linux Penguin, if you encrypt it using something like this ECB, so here we just get the values of the PNG uh, format and then encrypt those values. You see, you, you can see the pattern. You won't see the actual image, but you can see what was the pattern. And here you can say, okay, this is good enough for you to know what was being transmitted. But in CBC, everything just looked like a garbage. So you wouldn't be able to distinguish anything. So, and that's uh, uh, the symmetry, like the intro of the symmetric encryption. As we said, we also need the public cryptography or asymmetric. The most famous one is RSA, which is a combination of the letters of the first three uh, people who, the first letter of the last name of the people who created it. There are Ron Rivas, Adi Shamir, and Leonard Adelman. Both of them, are three of them are very famous in crypto community. And Ron Rivas is actually a professor just in MIT, if you want to go visit him. And they published their standard exactly 40 years ago. So it's now been 40 years that we have this crypto. And it was patented until 2001, but, uh, sorry, until 2000, and now the patent is in the public. So this is a public uh, crypto library now. And uh, the mathematical idea behind it is on the hardness of factoring a, prime, uh, a composite number. So what are the prime numbers? Prime numbers are the numbers that are only divisible by themselves and one. For example, five is a prime number because you can only divide it by five and one, but something like six is a composite number because it's a multiplication or a result of two times three. And factoring some number like six to two and three is very hard in large numbers, but I'm talking about like three, 400 digits of number, not two, three digits. Uh, so this would be an overview of the textbook RSA. Uh, the details are not that important, but P and Q are the two numbers or the two prime numbers that you generate, and the size of them is something like 300 digits or larger. And when you do the multiplication, you get that N, which you would be using for your private and public key, and that is something that is hard to factor. So when you get N, it's really hard to find out P and Q. But that's an open problem. That's what we believe to be a hard problem. But no one has a proof that you cannot do it within the, like the P time as part of the complexity classes. It believed to be secure. So to give you an example, for example, you take two primes. Again, here is just an example. You should never use these numbers. They should be 300 digits. I repeat that one more time. 5 and 11, your n would be the combination, 55. Your phi of n would be 4 times 10, 40. And if you choose your public key, it's usually either 3 or 2 to the power of 16 minus 1 because the way that the binary representation has some properties which makes the encryption much faster because they're all ones. Uh, the public key is known. You can just use some value like 3, and you've calculated the private key or D based on your E. In this case, it would be 27 because the multiplication of 2 would be 81, and 81 modulo of 40 is 1. Eight, 40 times 2 is 80, and 81 is only one number larger than 80, so it's 1, because E and D should be 1 mod some that product. And uh, for example, your message is uh, 2, and if you have a text message, you can just represent it as ASCII code, so that's why everything, can, if you consider everything as a number, you can just encrypt numbers here. And for example, for a character, you can just convert it to ASCII code and uh, encrypt that number. So you just... Uh, uh, use your E or the public key to exponent it to the N, and you get your ciphertext. And again, if you use your D 8 times 27, it would produce D for, uh, for the same message for you or your message. But one of the problems with uh, uh, RSA, the text with RSA or the example that we showed, it's not secure. Can anyone spot, again, what would be the problem? It's something like the ECB. So in security or crypto, they call it the in CPA uh, secure, which means 
if your message one and message two are equal, your encryption of message one and message two would be equal as well. Because here, if you're just uh, raising one number to a power, it's always going to be the same. So two to the power of three is always eight, no, no matter how many times you do it. And this is, again, something that we don't like. We want to some kind of level of randomness. If you encrypt two one time and the other time, we want to get different ciphertext. That's why we use, uh, for real world cryptography uh, problems, we use this OAP uh, mechanism. It's, again, something like the mode of operation, for example, you use for your AES. It's how you use your, uh, your base or primitive crypto. And here, you just add that R or random value, and uh, those G and H are random, uh, two hash functions, for example, SHA-1 or something like that, and you XOR those values, and you get a value. Uh, the R or the randomness is an important part here, that from two same messages, you can get two different ciphertexts. That's the reason we're using the R. And that would be a conclusion of our asymmetric cryptography. So, and hash functions. Anyone can give an example where do you see a hash function be used? Go ahead. Digital exactly. Digital signatures. Or even something very simpler, whenever you want to download a file, if you notice, they usually give you an MD5, SHA-1, or SHA-2 check some of the file to make sure the thing that you downloaded has not been corrupted. The property of hash functions, you get a very uh, long input message, and you produce a, a short uh, or constant size output. For example, your file is one gigabyte, your output is still going to be 128 bits or 160 bits. You, don't want, you want this constant small value. And you want it to tr have three properties. One of them is it would be hard to produce the number or the value that created this hash. For example, if I, ha I know it's hash of two is x, y, z, I want it to be very hard from x, y, z, you would be able to what was the actual thing that I hashed to. So that's called the uh, uh, pre-image property. The second pre-image uh, is uh, if you have a, a message M and another one M prime, you want it to be very hard to find another message that had hashes to the same value. You want these hashes to be different. And the third value is to, uh, it would be hard to find any two messages that will produce the same hash. For example, if you produce uh, one for hash of any file, it would still be very constant size, small, and uh, fast. But it doesn't have any of these properties because it's always produced the same values uh, and uh, all messages would produce the same thing. You have collision. Uh, there are uh, famous examples of hash functions. Right, right now it's hash two and hash three. SHA-1 used to be good, but trying to phase out, but as of now it's broken, or as they call it, shattered, because the Google team, team could find a collision of uh, SHA-1 value. That's why we don't, it's not required to use it anymore. It's now in practice also broken. Uh, and if you go to the shattered.io uh, uh, website, you can read more on how they produce these collision values. And to just uh, give you, uh, and that would be a conclusion of uh, hashing functions. To give you some very basic example, how easy it is to actually use cryptography in programming languages, this is an example in Python. So the first two are the imports. For example, if you're familiar with C, Java, this would be like your include or your import of Java. Uh, you just define the libraries that you are using inside your program. You just uh, define a, object, a hash object, and you say what kind of hashing you want to use. Here, for example, we are using SHA-2 that produces 256-bit digest for you. And you say the value that you want to create a hash of. For example, here, besides Boston 2017, would produce that hash for you. And this value is a B, uh, base64 encoding of the byte values, which means you only get 64 values here. But that's why they always look so random looking. Uh, when you have a like, proper uh, text, like beside Boston, you get random value there. So that would be to produce a hash to, in a program language. Uh, for AES, it's again the same thing. To uh, get random values, we use the URandom. On a Linux platform, you can just use the uh, Python. It's supporting a different program, uh, different environments. But just to generate a random value, one of the secure ways is use the URandom. Or inside your Linux, it would be dev URandom. And you get a random byte array of 16. And you use as IV and AES. Because if you remember, we said in CBC mode, we need to use IV for providing what? the randomness, right? So that's why you get your IV and your key, and you pass the uh, size of message that you need. And if you remember, we said uh, AES works on blocks of size. Here, you don't need to pad your message because the length of B-side 
2017 is actually 16. And 16 is 128 bits. This is by chance. Uh, if it was shorter or longer, you had to pad your message and make it a multiple of 16 bytes, then you would be able to encrypt it. Otherwise, you get an error, for example, in CBC mode. And the decryptor is exactly the same thing. You just define your functions, and you pass it your ciphertext and the IV, and you get the decryption. For RSA, uh, uh, again, uh, the key size 248. This is the 248 bits uh, for the, that uh, private key, that, uh, that uh, uh, P and Q, the prime numbers that we are talking about. They would be about like 500 digits of number. For example, 100 is a three-digit number. So 500 digits, would, the digit number is a large, large number. Uh, and uh, as we said, for public exponent, or E, you can use values like 3 or uh, 2 to the power of 16 plus 1. Because of the uh, property that they have in binary format, they provide some fast multiplication, uh, some um, fast explanation functionality. That's why these are, you can usually use these fixed values. And from the private key, you can uh, uh, calculate your public key. But from the public key, it's not possible to get the private key. And that's the whole property. From the public key, you won't be able to calculate the private key. And for encryption, uh, if you uh, notice, this is the OAP we are talking about. Uh, when you want to cre uh, create your RSA, you want to say what kind of RSA you want to use in, or the standard or the protocol of the RSA you want to use in. You want to use the OAP to produce that uh, in CPA security property. And uh, uh, those G and F functions that we are talking about, here we are saying that use SHA-1 for that functions G and H. And then you just uh, pass that hashing algorithm, and you encrypt the message. For decryption, it's the same property, but you're only using the private key instead of your public key. So the final takeaways for this talk is don't invent your crypto algorithms. For almost every functionality that you need, there are crypto uh, uh, libraries and algorithms that have been developed by cryptographers and have been tested for a long time, and we, are no, we know they are secure. Also, never implement your own crypto library, because uh, it might be, look very easy to implement all these functionalities, but you need to uh, think about side-channel attacks. For example, one of them is constant time comparison. If you want to make sure two values are not the same, if you use the normal, normal uh, comparison, as soon as two things are not equal, it's just going to say false and return. But in a constant time, you go through the whole uh, message, and then if they are not equal, you return back. So base, if they're just return on first, if two things are not equal at the first byte, and it returns, it takes a shorter time than if they are not uh, the same at the last byte. So we, by using this simple comparison side channel attack, you can actually get a key or even the decryption of a message. So that's why it's, uh, to get the actual implementation of crypto library is very hard. And even still, people get it wrong. Even the expert, for example, in OpenSSL, from to time, you see there are some vulnerabilities. It because, it's because they made a very simple mistake that they wouldn't realize, OK, it has these consequences. And there are experts who make these mistakes. So even the amateurs would make much more mistakes. Uh, doing the crypto using the libraries is not that hard. As we saw, it's just simple statements in every program language, but you, we still see people get it wrong. It's because uh, whenever you find a resource, most of them might be wrong or outdated. For example, if you look at the internet on RSA, a lot of people use these values, the small single digit values for P and Q. So if you don't know that these values should be hard, you see this, okay, this is an example, it makes sense to me, it encrypts a message, it decrypts a message, it should be good, so you might be using that. And there have been examples of using these wrong numbers inside real libraries. For example, you go to GitHub of something called Salt, and you look at their first evaluation, you can see that they actually make, made this mistake of uh, implementing the crypto library. And uh, if you have a data in transit, meaning, meaning going from point one to point B on a network, you can simply just use the SSL uh, protocol, or, and there is a function library for, for it to encrypt and transmit your data. And if you want to uh, have some data at risk, for example, if you want to encrypt a file and store it on your uh, computer, you can use com something called the PGP protocol. Uh, it's a combination of the public key, private key, and hashing functions to make sure whatever file you're uh, encrypting is secure, is you can transfer it to other people, 
and no one else can tweak something, your message, without you noticing. So these are a set of protocols that using all these three uh, primitives of cryptography that we talked about. Uh, you can use any of these, uh, these two, and you don't even have to implement them. There is already an implementation of all of them available. Uh, and that's it. Thank you if there are any questions. Yes. Yes. Can you give us some advice on random number generators and what to use there? Perfect. So to just to repeat the question, the question, uh, some of, uh, things or to consider when you want to generate a random number. So on Linux platforms, uh, there are two sources. Uh, the uh, entropy or the randomness you have is a dev slash random and you random. But the problem is random is blocking. It means if there is not enough entropy inside your computer, and this entropy comes from the, from the temperature of the computer, the mouse clicks that you do, all of these things uh, from the physical uh, sources. Uh, it produces a random number. And if there is not enough, it would block. But U random uh, uh, is not non-blocking, and for cryptographic mechanism, is as secure. And for example, uh, in uh, the Python program language, for, we can use the OSU random. And uh, th 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 always use the cryptographic safe random number generators, not the random, ge random number rand int that you have in, crypto uh, in your normal libraries. Because you also have the random uh, number in your libraries, but they always have a constant seed. Always use these cryptographic secure uh, randoms. And if you use the operating system, uh, random number generator, they're usually safe. So uh, th that one is a little bit smaller. It's not uh, like some of the exact cryptographic uh, properties of mathematical. If you go to uh, cryptographic stack overflow, you can get the perfect example by experts, not me, that they have there. Uh, but the reason they're using these two constant numbers is because both of them are all the values are one. And that makes the exponential fun uh, functionality much faster when you want to uh, do something to, to expand on something. Yes? Can you characterize what the flaws in DES were that led to it being replaced by AES? Yes. So D DES or DES, uh, uh, they have something called the privacy, uh, uh, dif the differential analysis uh, attack that was first, uh, I think, released by IBM, but they had to hold on to it. Uh, the, the, the history, I'm not sure exactly what, who knew who, who first, and then they realized. But if I'm not mistaken, some uh, special research labs knew about this functionality before it was publicized. And after it was publicized, they realized it's not as secure anymore. And the other things was the key size. The key size in DES is much smaller, which makes it easier to brute force, especially nowadays you, we have the hardware hard capability Probably anyone with not even large amount of money, you can buy these desk crackers. So basically, it was it was brute force, key space exhaustion. Right? That's one was one of the problem. The other one was was this differential uh, uh, analysis attack, which reduces even this key space that you have to uh, search for. Okay. And that's why they have this triple desk to make the key size larger. But again, it was yeah, but it was that differential analysis problem. Yes, please. And no, even right now, if you look at the, for example, something like NSA B suit or even uh, their new CNSA f form, they always uh, uh, recommend using some like just GCM. At the base, it uses the CTR, but the things it's also authenticated, which means you don't need to do the hash or HMAC, the HMAC or something like for your file. But GCM is more involved, and to introduce it here would even make people more confused. Uh, that's one of the problems. Also, it has some sign limit, but the recommended, recommended way is definitely GCM. And it's for Galois counter mode, so they use this Galois uh, field mal uh, multiplication to generate these tags of uh, whatever message you encrypt. So you make sure that your file hasn't been uh, middled with or uh, twitched uh, on the way of the transmit or whatever. Uh, and it's also using this counter mode as a uh, Encryption mechanism and it's also fast, but it also provides this authentication uh, 
property. And there are set of them, the A EAD, the authenticated encryption something. Any other questions? Thank you again, everyone.